What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel, Richard on Data. If you're new here, my name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this, and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. So in applied statistics and in data science practice, a lot of what you do revolves around making comparisons and examining associations between variables. I actually just did a video on the distinction between prediction and inference. And with inference, you're basically trying to say that some variable X, when you change it, that causes a change in some other variable Y. One super simple and popular method of making comparisons between groups is the two sample t-test. So maybe you're comparing two groups with respect to their response to some drug. So you run the test, then you find that it looks like group A is responding better to the drug than group B is. Well, today what I'm gonna talk about is the most important principle in statistics as far as interpreting and making any kind of comparison like that is concerned. And that principle is called Simpson's Paradox. So here's the literal definition of Simpson's paradox. It basically says that trends that appear when data are separated into groups can disappear or reverse themselves altogether when the data are aggregated. Now I'm going to restate that a different way because this way is how most people in real life end up tripping themselves up and making wrong conclusions from data. A trend that appears in an aggregate data set can completely reverse itself when you start separating that data into multiple groups. To put this yet another way, the relationship that you observe between two variables, and let's just call them X and Y, that relationship can completely reverse itself when both of those variables are influenced by some other lurking or confounding variable, let's just call that one Z. To illustrate this, we're actually gonna look at two different examples of Simpson's paradox. So you're gonna see exactly why this happens in the first place, and then the major implications and takeaways to when you're doing, I wouldn't say just data science, but any kind of data analysis in general. So this is gonna be our first example, and we're looking at two different treatments for kidney stones. Now, kidney stones can be small or they can be large. I don't know what the size cutoff there is, but all I know is I hope I never get one of any size because from what I hear, they sound absolutely horrible. But anyway, overall, treatment B appears to be doing better. If you look down under the both stones in the bottom row, it was successful 83% of the time, but treatment A was only successful 78% of the time. But here's what's going on. If you look at where these treatments were applied, notice that 263 cases out of 350 for treatment A were applied to large stones. Treatment B, however, 270 out of 350 times was applied to smaller stones, which are easier and less complex procedures. So naturally, both treatment rates are better for small stones than they are for large stones. So because treatment A is disproportionately used for the more difficult large stone procedure, it appears to be worse overall despite actually outperforming treatment B for both groups. So you saw an example there with categorical data. A treatment looks like it's doing worse because it's disproportionately used for harder cases, but once we start looking at it under a microscope, the effect totally reverses. Now let's look at an example for continuous data. This is our second example here, and here we have on the x-axis hours exercised in a week, and on the y-axis we have probability of getting some kind of disease. Unfortunately, much as I envy their position, I'm not sure how two people here exercised for a negative number of hours, so just bear with me on this one. But when we plot the scatter plot with a line of best fit, there's a moderate positive correlation of 0.33. So as hours exercised goes up, risk of getting this disease also appears to go up. So right away, I like this because if this is true, that means I can go out and I can cancel my gym membership, right? Well, no. Now here's what happens when we stratify all that data over age. So we have two groups here. We've got an under 50 group and we have an over 50 group. Now the correlation you saw earlier has completely reversed. 
It turns out age was a lurking variable here, and it turns out that older people who are at higher risk of getting the disease in the first place exercise for more hours than younger people do, hence causing the apparent correlation that you saw earlier, when in reality, both age groups, as they exercise more, appear to be at lower risk of the disease. So here's the takeaways. When we observe a relationship between two variables, X and Y, it's way too instinctive and easy for us to assume X causes a change in Y. However, that's only one of multiple possibilities. It could be Y causes a change in X. It could be the relationship you see between the variables is completely due to random chance. Alternatively, what's often happening is that there's some other variable Z which is influencing both X and Y. And in fact, you saw that here. Size of a kidney stone influenced the chance of a treatment being successful. Age influenced the chance of getting a disease. So you saw when we compared groups that were disproportionate with respect to some confounding variable, we came to wildly misleading conclusions. So here's the thing, when you're comparing groups, or especially when you're making any kind of statement about causality, be very careful because these problems are much more complex than they can appear on their face. Not only might you not have causality, which is something that requires a large amount of domain knowledge in order to know for sure, you might not even have true correlation in the first place. You saw two examples here, so you see it doesn't matter if the data are categorical or continuous. You have to be very diligent, use your domain knowledge and your relationship with your client to rule out or at least control for any potential confounding or lurking variables before you make any definitive statements about comparisons or associations. So thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, smash the like button. Also leave me a comment down below and let me know instances where you've run into Simpsons Paradox yourself. Until next time, Richard, on data.